China launches Bolshevik criminal investigation. Chinese prosecutors have launched a criminal investigation into a disgraced politician, Bo Shilai, state news agency Xinhua reports. The former Chongqing mayor was earlier expelled from parliament, stripping him of immunity from prosecution. According to state media, Mr. Bo is accused of abuse of power, bribe-taking and violating party discipline. His wife Gu Kailai was jailed in August for the murder of British businessman Neil Haywood. Genoa carried a statement saying that the Supreme People's Procuratorate had decided to put Bo Shilai under investigation for alleged criminal offenses as well as impose coercive measures to him in accordance with the law. Mr. Bo had formerly been seen as a rising star within the Communist Party, which is due to meet on 8th November for a Congress at which the new top leaders will be unveiled. Political Scandal His former Deputy Police Chief Wang Lijun has also been jailed in connection with the scandal, which came as China prepared for its 10-year power transition. Chinese official announced that Mr. Bo would be stripped of his last official post as a deputy in National People's Congress on Friday morning. Damascus car bombing wrecks Syria, Adil Adha truce. The Syrian capital Damascus has been hit by a car bomb attack, shattering a four-day ceasefire that had begun hours earlier to mark an Islamic holiday. Activists said the device exploded near a playground in Dafil al shuk a residential area in southern Damascus. State TV reported five people had been killed and more than 30 wounded, with children among the casualties. The UN brokered ceasefire began at 6 hours, that means 04 hours Greenwich Mean Time, but fighting has continued across the country. The truce to mark the Eid al Adha holiday was proposed by UN envoy Lagdar Brahimi, who hoped it would lead to a peace process. Both rebels and the army had said they would observe the truce only if the other side held the life. Reporters at the Turkey Syria border says fighting went on throughout the day near the frontier. The SOHR, one of the most prominent groups monitoring Syria casualties, reported various outbreaks of violence in Damascus, Homs, and Idlib. The group said fighting broke out four hours after ceasefire began at a military base near Marit al Numan town, close to the main road between Damascus and Aleppo. Later, a car bomb attack in the southern city of Dara killed three soldiers said the observatory. The group says its reports are impartial, however, its information cannot be independently verified. Eloy Gutierrez Menoyo, ex-revolutionary and dissident, dies in Cuba. Eloy Gutierrez Menoyo, a former Cuban revolutionary who later became dissident, have died aged 77, friends and family have said. His wife Flor Esther Torres Sanabria told AP News Agency that her husband died in Havana Hospital after suffering from heart attack. Mr. Gutierrez Menoyo was a commander during the 1959 Cuban Revolution. However, he later led an armed uprising against former comrade Fidel Castro and spent 22 years in prison. A close friend in Cuba, radio commentator Max Lesnick, said the opposition activist had died on Friday morning, the Miami Herald reported. Born in Madrid, Mr. Gutierrez Menoyo was the son of a brother of men who fought in the Spanish Civil War against General Francisco Franco. The family moved to Cuba in 1945 and Mr. Gutierrez Menoyo later joined rebels opposing dictator Fulgencio Batista. However, after the revolution, he lost faith in communist leadership and in 1961 was in exile in Miami, helping to form Alpha 66, an armed commando group. Mr. Gutierrez Menoyo and his fighters returned to Cuba in December 1964, hoping to launch an uprising, but they were captured after a month. He then spent 22 years in Cuban prisons until being freed 
through a petition of the Spanish government in 1986. He later moved to back Miami where he found Cambio Cubano, a centrist group that promoted dialogue and reconciliation among Cubans of all political backgrounds. Mr. Gutierrez Menoyo returned to Cuba in 2003. The authorities allowed him to stay despite his frequent criticisms of the government. In 2008, he expressed his disappointment that Cuba's communist system had remained unchanged. Cuba cannot continue to corner itself, trying to convince the world that there is democracy here when a one-party system will never be a democracy, he said. Foreign Minister S.M. Krishna quits before cabinet reshuffle. The Indian Foreign Minister S.M. Krishna has resigned with immediate effect. The move comes ahead of an expected cabinet reshuffle by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh this weekend. Mr. Krishna, 80, said he was making way for younger people. He had been foreign minister for three years. Analysts say the influence of foreign policy has been limited with key decisions having been taken by the Prime Minister. A visit by Mr. Krishna to Laos was cancelled on Friday. Mr. Krishna said he would continue to work for the Congress party. He is expected to return to Karnataka state where he served as chief minister for five years between 1999 and 2004. Mr. Krishna was widely criticized by the opposition for reading out the wrong speech at the United Nations in 2011. He was three minutes into the speech drafted for the Portuguese foreign minister before an aide drew his attention to the error. He said his oversight was understandable as all such speeches began with the same preamble. But Mohan Singh is expected to announce a thorough overhaul for his coalition's cabinet this weekend. And he's doing it right now. We'll move on to the business world. Samsung posts record profits on Galaxy phone sales. Samsung Electronics has reported record profits in three months to September, led by strong sales of its Galaxy range of smartphones. Net profit was 6.5 trillion won, that means dollars 5.9 billion, up by 91 percentage from a year earlier. The South Korean phone maker was also boosted by strong demand at its display panel unit. The results come after quarterly profits from Apple, its biggest rival in phones and tablets disappointed some investors. While Samsung has enjoyed tremendous success with its Galaxy range of smartphones, other manufacturers have been releasing new models. But not all mobile phone firms are doing as well as competition gets more aggressive. Last month, Apple started selling the latest version of its iPhone and this week launched a smaller version of best-selling iPad. On Thursday, it announced profits in the last quarter were $8.2 billion up from $6.6 billion last year. Welcome to the world of science. Rarest dog Ethiopian wolves are genetically vulnerable. Populations of world's rarest dog, the Ethiopian wolf, are genetically fragmenting, scientists say. Fewer than 500 of Africa's only wolf species are thought to survive. Now a 12-year-old study of Ethiopian wolves living in the Ethiopian highlands have found there is little gene flow between the small remaining population that places the wolves greater risk of extinction from disease or habitat degradation. In a study published in a journal, Animal Conservation Dara Gottelli of the Zoological Society of London and colleagues in Oxford, UK and Berlin, Germany, quantified the genetic diversity, population structure and patterns of gene flow among the 72 wild living Ethiopian wolves. And in sports, China enters French Open semi final. 
World number two, Saina Nehwal, warded off a spirited challenge from a three-time world junior champion Ratsanok Inthanon of Thailand to record 2020-2020 in the 41-minute women's singles quarterfinal of the French Open Super Series Badminton Championship late on Friday night. Saina, the London Olympics bronze medalist from India, ran up 11-7 sizable lead in the first game and looked to be easing her way to the wrap of the game. But the world number 10 from Thailand was in no mood to surrender easily and came up with a brilliant counter-attack which clearly surprised the star Indian performer, winner of four titles already this year besides the Olympic bronze. The 17-year-old Ratanok even staved off a game point and threatened to spoil Saina's game plan by picking three points in a row to make level the scores at 20 all. That was the phase when the Thailand girl came up with impressive forehand smashes and even countered Saina's brilliance at the net. Now, before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, we wish all of you a happy Idulatha. And the headlines once again. Berlusconi is set to appeal against tax fraud conviction. Romney promises real change to Obama's status quo. China launches Boshilai criminal investigation. Damascus car bombing wrecks Syria, Adil Adha truce. Eloy Gutierrez Menoyo, ex revolutionary and dissident, dies in Cuba. Foreign Minister Sam Krishna quits before cabinet reshuffle. And there we close today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.